All right. I think, yeah, obviously we're not live as if like I'm live with the audience, but I think we're recording now. So let me pull up my, uh, my questions and stuff. Uh, so I guess, yeah, to start off with, I'm not, uh, I, I read the first story of, of like the packet you sent me Mm -hmm. and uh, the one with the, the dogs and stuff like that. It was really good. Well done. Like I was like going to move on to the next one. I read like the opening kind of like the hook and yeah. I was like, I'm hooked by that one too, but I just had to move on to, to other things. But uh, I, I like, first of all, yeah, well done on those stories, by the way, and all the quality, all the artwork and stuff, it, it, professional. So I'll get into kind of like everything about like i'll just let you kind of describe like who you are what you do in the creative realm because most of what i'm sticking to is not like the the storylines of of anything that you're doing but really just like you as a business person because that's mainly what i focus on on the channel yeah for sure which so is, yeah which is if you want to go ahead yeah so i guess you know the the super intro -y stuff you know my name is omari malik i was born and raised in richmond virginia moved to new york when i was like 17 to go to college so went to school studied risk management studied insurance and ended up getting a master's because you know growing up where i came from like you know comic books have always been around but i guess to my you know parents and my stepdad it didn't necessarily seem that realistic of like oh, yeah. a career so it's like, you know, I, as an adult, you know, when I was a child, I was an angry teenager. I was kind of pissed, but like, as an adult in retrospect, you know, you go from your son saying he wants to be a guitar player in a metal band and do comic books. Like I too would tell my kid like, Hey, go to school, do something practical. So, you know, they pushed me to go to college, ended up, you know, kind of really liking it and like really getting into the business. And, you know, I was an insurance broker, so I was an insurance broker for a couple of years, worked on Wall Street, and, you know, I still had that creative bug, you know, just still going going to the comic book shop every week and always trying to do it. So kind of when the pandemic hit and I was at home a lot and still working and, you know, even more annoyed with my job than before, it was like, all right, now it's time to get ready to go. It's time to really kick things in high gear, went back to my mother's house, asked her to give me all my old sketchbooks and all the old scraps of paper that I was drawing and, you know, writing stuff on and kind of started accumulating things and getting it together. No, yeah, I see. I, I always joke that sort of that's the way to do it. It's like you can always be a scientist or a risk manager and also be a comic creator at yeah. the same time. It's a bit harder to try to become a comic creator and then be a scientist on the side or, you know, like, uh, yeah. but at the same time, I, th that brings up a question I was going to ask is like, how do you balance, are, are you full time, like running comics business now or your own business or do you, or are you like part time comics, full time job or are you split? So honestly, like it feels like I'm doing both full time because I still I'm in investment banking now. So I work at one of the big investment banks now. So that's like my actual day job. OK, so I do that. But then I'm literally like I get home immediately. I'm sending emails, booking cons, doing things, you know, working on different stories. And like a part of my business, I also, you know, do books for other people on their behalf. So I did a book recently for the NBA and my friend's clothing brand, Hypeland. So I'm project managing and doing books like that also. You yeah, know, you're good. Yeah, you're definitely I would call that like full time on both. I'm I'm yeah. essentially in the same boat. Yeah. At my day job is I manage a hotel, which takes up more than eight hours a day. And then on yeah. and then I spend, yeah, almost every spare moment after that, aside from uh, with my family is like trying to do this comic and movie business stuff. <laughs> and yeah, it's so. like, it's pretty much impossible. You're just like, dang, I'm all, you're always behind. Yeah. So always on, like, I'm one of those people where I'm always writing in my notes. I'm always getting an idea or it's just like, Oh, that'd be a cool title. That'd be a cool name for a character. Yeah. So. It can't, it doesn't stop. Like I cannot yeah. just not come up with stories in my head. That's why like, I like, I tell people I focus on the business. Cause it's like, if I talked about writing or stories, that's, it comes naturally. I don't even think of, it's just yeah. always happening. Like I'll talk forever on that stuff. But like when it comes to marketing and stuff, that's the stuff where it's like the little bit of time I, research and talk to other people that are doing it right 
So with that uh, said, let, I'll just jump into the questions I have for you. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I, the the simple one is, a, so the comics that you have, you have, is it, how many comics do you have like in print right now? So technically in print right now, there's the three originals and then the combined graphic novel anthology. And, uh, you know, since we're talking the business side of everything, one thing I wanted to do coming into this is like being a creative and being somebody that's like has a million trillion ideas. Like I wanted to come up with something that would show the different aspects of myself as a writer and really put forth the you know the idea that like listen this is a publishing company like i'm not just a writer that's like self-publishing his own titles like this is a legitimate publishing company yeah like, yeah my three stories are different you know I, I tell people that basically these are pilots so the first three one shots are basically pilots to give people not only an introduction into who i am as a writer but like what you can expect when you come into this and see black to publishing it's like we have a manga we have one that's kind of cinematic or one that's like kind of like a drama and then we have one that's basically you know the teen story the one that you would see on like nickelodeon or disney channel you know it's different things for different people but it's essentially a line in itself so like i said it's the three one shots and then the combined anthology featuring all three not nah, got gotcha and have you did you uh raise funds for those or kickstarter them at all or anything like that so i did a kickstarter not really to raise funds but just to use kickstarter as a platform to get the books out there to a lot of people yeah. i know people use kickstarter to you know promote and things like that so i did a kickstarter towards the end of last year it started in october kind of ended in november so I did uh, the Kickstarter goal was, like I said, just to promote because the books were done. I had already been selling them at conventions. But like I said, just to get things done, I think we did like 5,700 on Kickstarter. So, oh, well done. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> what company did you use to print your comics? So I, I do comic wellspring, man. Like they're, they're okay. great people. They're so nice to me. They're super dope. Like to the point where it's like when I was doing at this point is you know i just pick up the phone give them a call and they're like the nicest people ever nice okay yeah i i know them now uh <laughs> you're the second person that i've talked to that has um used them in fact you're the second person i've interviewed live i just started doing this <laughs> <laughs> um but so what have you done any other youtube channels or podcasts uh Some yeah, I've done a few. Um, when I was doing a Kickstarter, that's when I was doing a lot of press. So I was trying to do press then. So I did. Uh, shout out to my friend BJ from his channel. Comics are dope. That's really well. Did some advertising on Cape Joel. You know, shout outs to Joel. He's a super nice guy. And a few other like smaller podcasts and things like that. Okay. Yeah. Nice. I'm trying to gather up a list now. Um, of just like the those that people recommend that people have been on, especially like indie creators like us and um. So that I can just like have a, you know, whenever like someone is, is like when you're going live, everybody just kind of wants to do everything. Yeah. But I feel like if you have a strong list, then you can kind of pick and choose or like coordinate out. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So I'm just like trying to gather a list from everybody. Yeah, for sure. What? So you said you've been going to cons. Which ones have you gone to that you feel have been successful? Like how many have you gone to and which ones like did you like break even or make money on? So for me, as as I kind of mentioned earlier, like, you know, I was a heavy metal kid. So I was like definitely a hardcore punk and a scene kid. So from my perspective, like, you know, me going to cons, it's literally like being in my old punk and metal bands. And it's like and nobody came to see us, but we're here to put on a show. Like we're here to be seen. We're here to be loud. Like we're here to get attention. So to me, I've looked at every con as kind of successful, like, you know, from number standpoint, like I'm looking at it as like, listen, if I come home with no books, that's a win. So, hey, yeah, for sure. And, and sometimes the success, yeah, is like, especially at the beginning, that you're like kind of front load and just trying to get your your brand out there. It's, exactly. it's like it's 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 basically in itself a a marketing uh, upfront cost. Yeah, for sure. But uh, a list of cons I've done so far. Uh, I did Baltimore. Uh, I'm originally from Virginia, so I do VA Comic Con uh, this year. This year, I've been really going really hard and trying to do a con a month. So I did Heroes. Whoa. Yeah, so I've been trying to do a con a month. That was the goal I set out for myself. So we did Heroes. We did Eternal on Long Island. In like two weeks, I'm going to be in Chicago for Fan Expo. 
doing Baltimore again in September, New York Comic Con in October, and we're doing LA Comic Con in December. So nice. Is it hard? Like uh, some of those big ones, I thought it. You know, you kind of have to apply, and they may not accept you. Were there any ones that you were denied to? Like, isn't New York Comic Con a bit harder, or is it just one yeah, of those so where like you need you need they ask for a lot of cash or something up front? So yeah, New York Comic Con. Ironically, last year I applied to New York Comic Con, got denied. And this year they reached out to me. So they like reached out to me to participate in like kind of being a small press section. So, you know, kind of like one of those three, six, you know, those like wild they, moments. Are you able to argue that you're like a local and that means anything more at all? I, I, I'm i sure they could. I, I didn't necessarily because of the fact, like I said, I got reached out to like they were. Yeah, that's awesome. That Yeah. So they came to you. So, yeah. Yeah. See, I was at New York Comic Con last year, but my, my publisher invited me. So I didn't I didn't like go as like to uh, apply for a booth or whatever. But I remember whenever I was like researching, trying to tour, I'm actually thinking about touring next year. Just like you're saying, like as if I'm like a band, like the, yeah. I kind of view the whole sh like shebang of like marketing comics sort of a lot like being an indie band and promoting an indie movie where it's like. There's the online stuff, but it's only one subsection of like how you really need to get it out there. And ultimately, just like your band, you have to tour eventually. No, you have to sure. literally go to different places and try to firsthand reach out to places where that's where your audience is. Like, you know, <laughs> that, you know like when I took like I said, I was a punk kid. So like that's one of the things where it's like I remember going to shows and like you hear about certain bands, like you'll see them online and stuff. And it's like, we could care less. Like we might've not liked their logo. Like when we saw them on a flyer, but it's like the band is so cool or it's like, they perform really well. And like, they're one of the bands that are just hanging out and saying hello to people where it's like, all right, now you won me over by being outside and like kind of being around. So that's another way I look at it. You know, like I don't let anybody walk past my table without saying hello to them. And, you know, even if you don't, buy something it's like hey man like having that moment of connecting with somebody and for the people that do you know showing them a bunch of love and appreciation like it goes a long way because it's like those are the moments that stick with people forever like yeah you know uh, i i think i have this question later down the line but i'll like bring it up to the front because you seem like someone that has just sort of natural charisma or something like to where it's not <laughs> as hard for you to basically sell books at a con Whereas I, uh, you know, at some points I can get into that, but a few years back, I, uh, I went to a couple of like music festivals and I went to like New Orleans for Mardi Gras. And mm -hmm. I remember like just seeing the, like a, there's literally just like a million people at these places. And there's people that just sort of like naturally, they have a backpack and some books and they would just be selling like. You know, it's not all just like selling like illicit drugs or whatever. Like yeah. there's some guys that are just like they sell artwork and stuff and people that are selling like books and comic books. And they were just like s selling twenty dollars a pop. No problem. And I was like, what? Like maybe this is like a whole route that like as I started making comic books nowadays, I was just like, I guarantee there's like somebody that has sort of tapped into that market. Is there anything, especially being like in New York? Are there like non comic related communities that you're a part of or events or kind of like festival kind of things that go on that you've tried to like sort of uh, latch into that world and not just like cons? Yeah, for sure. So I'm actually doing uh, this one called like Black Art Matters, which is like in October, it's a it's an art pop up. So it's a bunch of different artists. And like, when I say artists, like painters and canvas people, and like, it's like a big indie artsy fartsy sort of thing that I'm going to be a part of. Nice. Also, I, I have a bunch of friends in the fashion industry. So a bunch of friends that have like streetwear brands and I've taken classes at FIT and stuff like that. So like, I'm really in a fashion and things like that. So it's like, I've had friends that I have a friend, uh, I have some of my frat brothers actually that do like a, they do a pop-up tour called the Coast Flares Tour, where they're literally just a bunch of different clothing brands and streetwear brands all get together and do pop-ups in different cities. And I've been a part of that, you know, it's a bunch of clothing brands and me with my few t-shirts and comic books just there, you know, selling, hustling and trying to get things together. So that's one thing that I, I've noticed, like you mentioned, of like trying to be in spaces where comics aren't always there. And it's helped out, you know, ironically, because it's one, it's like, 
I'll get the people that are that come in and like, oh, I used to read comics when I was a kid and like, oh, this is kind of cool. Like, I want something. Or the people that have fallen off from comics and they're like, wait, they still make these? Like, hell yeah, I'll check it out. So, you know, it's it's less competition being in those spaces, which is why sometimes I like it because it's like, I'm the only one here. I'm not, you know, like everyone else trying to beat you over the head and saying, hey, check out my book, check out my book. So, yeah. So <laughs> I, yeah, for sure. That That's why a lot of why I kind of like I have a grander vision in that we can sort of not not bring back comics, but just re-expose like that. They are still a medium that people care about it. And because uh, I've, I've made jokes to where if people that aren't necessarily into comic books or even often are just like they still make comic books or like yeah. like graphic novels are a thing and it's like yeah they're, they're actually a pretty big deal um but it's like to someone that's outside of this they only know like movies and then and so like like to them they don't distinguish me from you from scott snyder from you know like it they're we're kind of all just like lumped together because they're just outside of this space. So it's it's just like once you're in the community, it's like you actually feel like you have merit in it. That's why like it, it, once you're like making comics, it's like once you have something out there, it's like you're in, you know, like yeah. it's kind of like and then as long as you want to stay in the game, you can be. And there's plenty of us that are like gathering and the more of us that are that are there and the more of us that are like actually putting out quality, it just grows the greater community and not it's not like we're just some kind of sub subgroup of a subgroup. No, definitely, definitely. <laughs> like, like you said, man, trying to like grow this thing. And it's one of those things where people are like, how are you going to make comics bigger? Like everybody knows Superman, everybody knows Batman. It's like, yeah, you guys know them, but it's like, I, funny enough, so I live in Brooklyn and I have a comic book shop literally like, I want to say 10 minutes away from my house, but it's like, I'll have friends that come over and they're like, wait, there's still a comic book shop near you? Like, they <laughs> they don't understand. It's, like, literally in the neighborhood or even, like, like I said, I, I work in the city, so it's, like, you know, I, I'm pretty much working in Times Square, and it's, like, there's Midtown Comics right there that have three locations, but it's, yeah. like, people don't know. They don't understand that, like, this stuff is right here, or, or even the fact that, like, you can go on a, I, I was in Target the other day, and I saw the Batman 89 graphic novel in Target. It's, like, this stuff is here. It's just like we're trying to figure out how to get everybody to like recognize it when they see it. Yeah, that's what's really crazy. Is it's it's a part of everyday life and culture, and yet people just don't realize that it's yeah. yeah like you said, they just totally glimpse past. It's the same way that like I don't notice that there's light bulbs in Target. You know, like just some <laughs> yeah. some people just it's just not a part of their world. Whereas, uh, but anyway, <laughs> uh, I get. Are you, uh, do you have any books in physical stores? Like, do you like that comic book shop in Brooklyn? Did you, were you able to convince them to put your stuff on the shelves? Yeah. So my local shop, you know, we're, we're getting in there. So I kind of, I've been hesitant when I say hesitant, like, you know, I wanted to have obviously like the release first and, you know, but the owner, you know, shout outs to Bulletproof Comics, the owner, Hank, he's a super dope guy, super nice talking to a few other local shops around Brooklyn and things like that. And even back home in Richmond, like the comic shop that have seen me grow up trying to get in there and stuff like that. So for me, my, uh, I don't want to sound crazy, but like I'm super protective of my stuff and kind of like being one of those people that's like I, anybody that I do business with or, you know, I put, you know, I'm around, you know, I really want to put the boots to the ground. Like I really want to be invested. I really want them not only to promote them, but I want them to, you know, be actively engaged and, you know, want to sell my books as well. You know, I've seen so many books just live on the shelves and shops and people walk past them, but it's like, I want to, you know, I want people to buy these. Like, you know, I want people to check these out. I want everybody to be invested and engaged here. I, I, yeah, I 100% feel you. And I've actually like, I kind of, I'm working on a nonfiction book that's basically with the sole focus that under, like seeing comics as an empire and not just a story <laughs> and how like you, like the, your three stories that you have there, those could be massive IP. If, yeah. if you like go through it, like if that's what you want them to be and uh and there are steps that you can take step by step to to make that happen and it's not that crazy 
it's and like it's it's actually like kind of the sole focus is is ultimately like how you as an individual and your friends can grow to where like you your what you think is some little story can actually be a, a the future of entertainment going forward because not only I think like can can it be done with con like I think like specifically with like comic books and independent comic books and creator own stuff is one of the almost like best fast tracks to go if you have a story in your head it's it's uh like with so much going on as far as like the changing of of you know into streaming and how web you know like web comics are becoming bigger over here and just in general how much manga is coming back into full swing and, and like along with just all the transitions of technology and stuff like it's now easier and you have like more power with the internet going on to where you can take these comic books and like actually make them into not just like oh i got a publisher and then i got some kind of deal like you can call someone and be like i will hire you to animate this story you know and like you can send it like there's like you can be the person that takes every step but anyway i don't want to go on a tangent about that no, so uh good uh what um I guess what's your primary now that the what's the main form of distribution that you use to get your books to your audience? Do you have a website? Do you is it uh, going to cons? Is it physical stores? Uh, yeah. So the main distribution. So I had the official like release um, two weeks ago now. Yeah, it's July 28th. So on the 14th, we had the official release. So there's two methods. So for digital comics, they're on my website, black2publishing.com slash store. So that's where all the digitals are. And for the physical books, we're on Amazon. So it's kind of like, as of right now, as far as like online sales, like Amazon exclusive. So and I'll be sure to send you the links for everything. But Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I'll put them in the, the notes and uh, the description. Um, What have you, do you do any kind of like online advertising, Facebook ads or Google ads or anything like that to kind of, or like funnels or whatever? Uh, not yet. Like as far as like the ads, like me, I've, it's been a lot of me, you know, putting in those, putting the boots to the ground. So a lot of obviously posting on my Instagram pages and things like that. I'm a part of 10 million Facebook groups for comics and black comics and things like that. So making a bunch of posts and asking people to check them out. Um, when I did do the online release, I kind of had a, I convinced all my friends and family to kind of do like a media blitz. So it's like, listen, I need everybody to post this. Everybody, here's some pictures. Everybody shared. Here's the link. So, you know, I kind of swarmed social media with like all my friends and stuff like that. So hitting the ground running uh, a little bit of promo with my friends that are in a fashion, you know, cause they have a nice followings and accent in the post and check me out and things like that. And then doing the stuff like this, you know, I'm trying to do the podcast, trying to get the write ups and things like that. Nice. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's, there's so much that can be done. It's like, it's hard. It's like, it's, awkward where you're just like any downtime i have i'm just like i know there's things that i could be doing right now but then whenever you always feel like you don't have time yeah for sure and then for <laughs> me it's like it's one of those things where it's like you know the books are so fresh so it's like i want to hold off on certain things to like keep giving them legs so it's like you know i don't want to front load too too many things and it's like i want to get to a point where it's like all right once i've exhausted all my methods all right that's when we'll turn on the ads that's when we'll do this that's when we do that you know yeah, gotcha. How um, what specific like? I guess you don't have to just like name them all off, but is there like a, a few specific Discord groups or Facebook groups that you're a part of where you actually like went from zero to a lot of engagement or like that you're like you feel like you're a strong part of now? Yeah. So ironically, like when I say ironically, it's like I didn't expect the post to like do as well. It's like I, I'm looking at my phone right now it's like posted you know if it'll come in focus hopefully but you know this one post you know where it's literally saying hey what's up everybody i just released the debut one shots for my original titles 200 likes in this one group called the blurred brigade whoa nice yeah. 200 likes is yeah that's pretty up there um i clicked through a few other ones just the blurred brigade yeah, the Blurred Brigade. Um, is that an indie comic thing, or is that something else? It's just like a nerd group, like a like a nerd group. Like, like I said, when I say I'm in so many like 
comic book groups and just like so yeah that's what i was gonna ask next what groups are you in that are like outside of comics like that you can that you are sort of like also a part of a niche group so you say like nerd groups are you part of like um, yeah like anime the anime discussion groups like i'm a big anime head so well especially my boxing coach i box on the weekends and my boxing coach is like heavy in the anime so okay once, we, once we're doing training sessions like my boxing coach has convinced me to at least watch like five or six animes because every time we have a session he's just like hey have you seen Vinland saga have you seen dr stone have you seen this like yeah watch this and then we can talk about it next week so you know like a bunch of different anime groups like this one um connecting comic book artists and writers and publishers 150 likes there nice um, black comic creators a bunch of blurred con you know like 250 likes there and black anime nerds 500 likes there so and those were just the initial posts where, like I said, I didn't expect them to kind of do so well when I was just making the first announcements and, you know, some of like just anime nerd groups and things like that. So, yeah, well, that's what I've learned from the anime groups is because my the the main co-writer that I write with, Aaron Crow, he, he's he's real into anime, anime and manga. And uh, yeah, I've learned that that the fans of anime are some of the strongest fans of anything yeah you know, like sure. i can't for, like like for the life of me like i'm there's not like one thing that it's like this is what i'm a fan of like i can't even say like comics you know like but there's some plenty of the mo most of my friends are the opposite where like they have one thing that they have, have always been obsessed over whether it's you know card tricks or you know cars and I, it's just like me i'm just like i have 30 percent interest in almost everything and then there's a few things which is basically like my writing where it's like okay at least that i'm like 60 percent. but there's nothing where i'm just like i watch everything that comes out you know like especially now that i have such little time like even at at, at one point i any especially certain types of like new movies that came out and especially certain directors i saw everything they ever did like even like christopher nolan I, you know, I haven't seen the new Oppenheimer, you know, like it's just I'm out of the loop and and it's just like I just have such little time to to uh really enjoy a lot of the realm anymore because I'm so focused on the business aspect along with it's, my normal it's life. the same way. Thank God for the New York City subway because that's where I'm sitting here watching animes and mangas just on my commute because I'm just sitting uh, on the train with nothing. See, that's another thing I think, you know, in the future is going to be why entertainment is going to be even a bigger deal is because if any of this sort of – um like self-driving cars thing that actually takes off in the next yeah. like five years, all of a sudden everybody's going to have free time on their hands, you know, like, and they're either going to be reading or watching something, you know, yeah, I, I, sure. that's how, how I see it. But it, I'm, I mean, who knows? It could not, take no, off. I, it, there's a lot of people that are like, yeah, it's coming. <laughs> no, I definitely, it's funny enough. That's been a big way of how I've like promoted my books. Like, I've committed to this thing where it's like, no matter what I'm doing, I always have like books. So I'm always carrying, you know, kind of like a messenger bag with like some comics in it and some like flyers. And ironically, like I'll get on the train and I'll see people like reading comics or graphic novels or like reading manga. And I'll just walk up to them like, hey, man, like I make comics. Check me out. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. And that's the beauty of comics is they are they are walking artwork or like it's, yeah, it's not sure. just a book like you'll want to hold on to it i like to have them around my house i like they act as you know that they, they, they look good on tables they look good on walls they are collectible they're just an, a very interesting medium like just all around a cool thing um it looks like i forgot that zoom says you're running low on time let me oh. see it says we have 10 minutes i yeah. can always extend longer i think but uh yeah, let me uh, sure. see I had uh so you're you're like super rounded on a lot of different I feel like you have a lot of different expertise. <laughs> you're on Wall Street, you went you have a master's degree in risk management, you're a storyteller. And judging just by like that first one that I read, like, man, you really got it. Because like there's very few times that I'll read something and you're just like, ah, oh, I hate I can't like with that character whenever the first one with the guy with the powers and the dogs and they're yeah. like coming at him and they're blaming him for something he didn't do 
like it, 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 you feel it. You're just like you feel that tension, and it's like that emotional, just like yeah, he's the innocent one here. You guys are lying, you know, like, and you just feel it. And it's very rare that I see where it's just like you got me because it's just like ah, you want him to just like take revenge. So it's like you have the you figured it out, you know, like that's a great opening, like like you're saying, like a pilot, like no matter what that could like that. I feel like you did whatever it is that you're supposed to do with an opening issue of a comic series. And so like, <laughs> if you can do that you. and along with virtually everything else. Um, so wh who did the artwork for uh, your book? So I have, as you can tell, I have three different artists. Like that one's my guy uh, to He's such a, he, he's, he's awesome, man. He's a great guy. Great guy. Um, the power of the internet. So I met all three of my artists being in Facebook groups, you know, like, well, one of them I met on Instagram, just like going through different artists and, you know, reaching out to people and like, it's the power of the internet where, you know, you can literally become friends with somebody on zoom and going back and forth and talking about things. So yeah. You know, so it, nice. So you, you, you did it, I guess about the way that, uh, the rest of us do it. Um, just finding them online, you know. Yeah. Although uh, I just recently um interviewed Carissa Grant and she like found a lot of people at cons to do like yeah. merch and and I was like, oh yeah, I. But, yeah, it's really it's just like any other industry. Like it, you just you go out there and you network, and that's where you find the people that are like, yeah, I do this thing. This is my expertise, and um and now but now the beauty of online, you don't have to always just go to physical places. It's like you reaching out and me reaching out to other people, and it's like I can tell that you're gonna be one of those people that's like, it, people are going well, gonna want to be connected with, <laughs> you know, because you're so well rounded on all kinds of things. I um, it. I think I. I've basically gone through kind of my my basics. Uh, what do you want it to to get out there to the world, or if you have any questions for me, or if you is there anything that you want to go over that I didn't ask? Um, I not necessarily. I mean, the main thing that I really want to get out to people and like, you know, obviously I want people to buy the books. I want them to check them out. But you know, if one thing that I want people to know is to like. Listen, Black Two Publishing is a publishing company. So it's like if these three books are something that'll, you know, I'd love people to give it a try. But if you don't think that these three are for you, it's like, listen, we're going to have more. You know, I'm always coming up with ideas, you know, and, you know, as we as the company grows, you know, I want to be able to be, you know, a place for other creatives to come together, you know, to help them out and do different things. But, you know, I want people to take a chance, you know, I, you know, with all the hype of the Ninja Turtle movie and things like that coming out. It's like, who's to say, you know, whether it's me, you or other indie creators, you know, one of these things could be something that you all love in years to come. So, you know, whether it's me or anybody else, you know, check us out, give us a chance, you know, shout outs to the majors, you know, all the big companies, but it's like, a lot of people don't rush to buy the key issues when they're right here in your face now. Like, don't wait until you see season three of the boys to, you know, try to go buy the dynamite editions. You know, there are indie creators at all your favorite cons. You know, there are indie books in those local comic book shops that you go into. You know, check us out. Give us a chance, you know. Yeah, it is one of those things where I like to tell people where I'm like, do you remember whenever you were younger and like you like you were saying when you were in like punk bands and stuff and you yeah. actually could hang out with the the people in the bands and you thought that they were like the coolest thing in the world? Oh, it's I'm the same with any comics. Like you can be a part of that world. You know? it, it's so crazy. So I have uh I have some guys that like I was in the scene with uh this big band now called Bad Omens. And yeah, I know them. So Bad Omens is from my hometown in Richmond. And I remember when they started the band, I remember when Noah started hanging around in the scene and coming around and it's like, holy shit, like Noah's huge. Or even like, if you think about a band like Turnstile, like I grew up in Virginia and Turnstile's from Baltimore. So it's like, I remember seeing Turnstile play a house show. Yeah, yeah. That's a, yeah, that's, living room. Those are some <laughs> of my best memories. Yeah. I look like, at I, and I describe it now as like, you can be like, that is basically like the equivalent to investing in like investing your time and f infatuation with like something that it's the same with like comics where it's like, or you're investing in a relationship. If you actually like join this community to where it's like, yeah. it's just like bands to where like people 
travel and and like go to see certain bands and you're with the band you're kicking it with them they get bigger and like as they get bigger you get bigger in a way and you know that's like how people end up becoming uh, anyway yeah i could go on tangents about that stuff too because yeah i I used to be in like a pop band we are electro or something is what we called ourselves but yeah it was like uh but just such a great time and it's a great comparison because just like now it's like I'm in the indie community. There was a time where we all wanted to be in like the indie band community. Yeah. And uh, we didn't realize because we were so young that what they were doing is not that crazy. No. <laughs> you know, no. it's just a grind. You know, to us, it seemed like they were rock stars. But in reality, you, you know, although they were like rock stars, it wasn't like this grandiose thing that we all thought it was. It was really just like they were kicking it, barely making any money, just doing what they loved until they, you know, until they had to give it up or they became big or whatever. Yeah. Um, it says we got two minutes left. What uh, what's your website again? So blacktoothpublishing.com. You can find everything there. I do a bunch of updates to the new section so to always keep people up to date on what i got going on so black publishing.com for everything instagram at black publishing uh my amazon i'll give you guys a link to my amazon author page but it's like amazon slash author slash omari underscore malik so what's the main book that if someone just looked up like your name or your publishing that uh like on amazon what's the main book that people can buy What's so it called? If, you, if you type in Black Tooth Battalion, that's like my Amazon analytics since launching two two weeks ago has told me that most people are buying a combined anthology that has all three. Yeah, so, for sure. Yeah. yeah, that's what I would buy. <laughs> yeah, so that's the one. If you type in Black Tooth Battalion, it'll come up. And obviously, as you're looking down on the Amazon page, it'll show you the individual ones. Also, I have merch on Amazon, too. So if you just search Black Tooth Publishing on Amazon, you'll see the books, you'll see the T-shirts, you'll see everything. I gotcha. And if you have just like a, um, a, your own like press release or whatever, all the links and stuff, send them to me and I'll put yeah, them for in sure. the thing. What's, uh, what's like your next step? What's your, what's your like kind of like next big goal to sort of branch out and, and bigger audience? Is it just more of the same or do you have like a specific thing where like I have my next book and I'm trying to collaborate with so and so? So I, so if, if you know, the real next thing is like, from a business standpoint of like being a business person, it's like, man, I need to, I need to do, do a book. I need to write a book for one of the majors strictly just to get that clout because it's like, I know I can't help, but like, I know how people operate. And I know once I have that little tag on a resume, it'll make everybody, you know, pay a bit more attention. But that's the one thing that I'm kind of, you know, trying to work out or figure it out some, some way, somehow. But the real thing, it's like, you know, I'm going hard. So the next thing is like, obviously, I told people these are pilots. So we're going to take on a full series. We're going to put them out. We're going to keep pumping, going to keep doing more stories and, you know, try to make Black Tooth huge. Right on, man. (laughs) Well, well done. And thanks for uh, coming on. And I'm going to try to get you on again. All right. Awesome. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. I'll catch you later. For sure. Bye-bye.